Well, welcome today. I'm excited about the podcast. I have a visitor with, I don't know a whole visitor. bunch about you, except <laughs> the fact that I'm your mother. Exactly. And you are also the pastor of the Sea Church in Savannah, Georgia. But we've been talking about the blessings and the curses. A lot of people don't like people using the word curses. You can call it whatever you want, but right. it's born a blessing. And I'll say it this way. It is God lifting his hand, and there's an open right. door. <clears throat> when I think about it, I've got you here for a special purpose. But when I think about the children of Israel, Moses sent them out to spy off the land. Yeah. Thank God he sent Joshua and Caleb with him. But he sent them out to spy the land. And yes, they came back. The report, the fruit was large. It was, you know, wonderful. But then they said, but we saw giants. And, you know, I thought to myself, after all God has done, they took a stand. They were not going to go over there and occupy that land because of the giants. God never even said you had to fight them. He, he said, go not, spy no. out the land and come back with a report. Well, as a result, they murmured, they complained, and they said, we wish we'd have died in the wilderness and all this kind of stuff. I, here's what they said. I want to read it to you. First of all, in Numbers 13, verse 31, he said, But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they're stronger than we are. Do tell. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, The land of which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. you got to be kidding. <laughs> and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Then we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. They didn't know how that they looked at them, but no. here they go again. Here's, here's, listen to this, verse 14. You know any Christians like this? So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only if we had only. died in the land of Egypt. If only we had died in this <laughs> wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? I hate pity. You all know that? She sure does. I hate pity. I I just hate that. People that are so full of themselves. Right. <clears throat> in fact, I saw a man today in my neighborhood side journey. He's in a wheelchair. And it's electric wheelchairs. And he rolls it all around the landings that way with his dog. He's always cheerful. And I came to him and said, good morning. He said, it's a great day today, isn't it? And I thought to myself, you know, you look at him. He said, I said every day, we're great to be alive. Brought me. He said, there's always so many things to be thankful for. And then I told him about Paul. Mm -hmm. I think myself happy, O King Agrippa. I got that scripture. <laughs> he said, I didn't know that was in the Bible. I said, oh, there's a lot of wonderful things in that. That's good. But I got that in. But here he is in a wheelchair. He lives alone. He can feel so sorry for himself. But he starts, he said, I, can say, I can't day. walk my dog. I can't walk my dog. But he's in a wheelchair walking the dog. Walking the dog. That's awesome. Pulling him behind him. You know. And then they said this. They said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. I love that. I mean, you know, it brought me back to remember when, um, back in Exodus, when God was letting the children of Israel go. And God said in Exodus uh 12, I think, wait, wait, let me get to the scripture it was. 13, in Exodus 13, mm -hmm. he said, if the people are faced with it, so God's letting them out, giving them every, everybody always talks about the gold and silver that they yeah. had, but that's not all they had. They had every weapon that they could yeah. possibly need for war before they ever left Egypt. They left Egypt with all of that. They left Egypt well-bodied, yes. strong, all of that stuff. And God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. I know. So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness towards the Red Sea. Thus the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready for battle. You know, that is so good. I think about people as, as Christians, you know, when mm -hmm. they're being Christians, the least little thing they want to throw their hands up and quit. 
with all this inheritance that we have. I never could understand that. Still don't understand But that. he didn't just leave us an inheritance. He left us with every weapon of war that we could possibly need. We have everything we need, every weapon of war, plus the Holy Spirit. Yes. To warn us before the battle even gets here. And then we want to go whine to God like they did and say, you just don't understand how bad my life is. You just don't understand how rough it is. I tried that one time. I know. You did. See, I learned. Everybody always says to me, you, 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 you don't whine in a battle. I can't tell you going to battle. I'm like, do y'all remember who my mother is? <laughs> I was never allowed to have pity. I was never allowed to do that. And, I, and I've told my children all their life, I'm like, you're a womble. Y'all have spiritual heritage on both sides. Wombles don't quit. We don't quit. And I said, listen, you have everything that you need in the spirit to fight every battle you have. You have two choices. You either knock down the wall or you jump over it. But we don't yeah. let a wall stop us. Mm -mm. And that's got to be the, the attitude of every Christian. That's the attitude of Joshua and Caleb. Who cares what we see? I know. Who cares what's ahead of it? If God's already told us he's given it to us, then we go in there. And you know what? It makes you wonder if they didn't whine and cry, if they didn't do all that, if they had just walked into the land, wouldn't it be amazing if God had just all of a sudden made those people flee? I know it. Not a single battle had to be fought. No. Not a single thing. They walk in and go, this is my territory. God gave me this land. I'm taking it back. They have to know who they are yes. and who they belong yes. to. But when I just become a Christian, I didn't know anybody to call and talk to other than my mother or brother Emmanuel in Africa, which I couldn't get all the time. So brand new, brand new. And just though so many things was going wrong. So I thought Job went and sat by the ash heap. Now, I hadn't read all of Job. I love Job. this story. I didn't know that God got on to Job. So I went on the side of my house where the trash cans were. And I'm having a big pity party. And I look up and my neighbor is looking at me. Her, her, her kitchen window happened to be right there where you were standing. Right where I was crying <laughs> by the garbage can. And I thought, well, you can chalk up her ever wanting to get to know me. She probably thought, I knew that woman was nuts. Now I know, I know she is. So I'm crying and I'm having a pity party to God. And he said, Data, I'm touched by your tears, but I'm moved by your faith. Man, he didn't have to say another word to me. I got up from there and I could hear Earl call me, Data, Data, her daddy. <laughs> I dried my tears. I walked in there like this and he said, where were you? I said, it don't matter where I was. But I'll never go there again. And then I told him the story. I said, I will never. These are things that I make up my mind. Right. I will never do that again in my life. I will never let things that happen to me affect my relationship and doubt God's ability. No. And I never have. No, you haven't. And one of the things that you said to me one time that has always stuck in my mind, I've never forgotten it. So I've never been able to have a pity party is that as I'm having a pity party, the devil is sitting over there with all his little minions and they're celebrating because I'm doubting God by pit having pity. I, when, when people don't realize that when you're whining and crying like that, when you're, when you're feeling sorry for yourself, you're doubting God's power to deliver you. And don't you know the devil enjoys and he that? enjoys every moment of yeah. it. So like you said one day when we were singing a song um, during worship and, and you, you looked at me and you said, I hate that song. Real nonchalantly. I was like, okay, okay, I got it. And then we sang it a little bit longer and you turn around and looked at me on your, put your hands on your knees and leaned over and go, I hate that song. And I'm thinking... It's really not that bad. I don't understand why she hated it so much. And then she came to me the next day. I always know that when she says things like that to me, when she's that firm, she may not explain it at that moment, but you go back and always pray and say, Father, why do I feel this strong about this? And when you came back, you made the comment. You said, why would I sing to God when I'm worshiping him? Why would I sing to God what the enemy whispers to me about him? Well, when you're having a pity party, you're saying to God, what the devil is saying to you about yeah. him. And you're questioning his character. You're questioning his love. And you're questioning his ability. Why would you say that when you're in his presence to him? Yeah. And it was so funny because I thought, I had no idea why I hated it so. I, I, lo I love that. That's all, that will always stick with me. Yeah. Always stick with you me. You don't. Now, you can listen to songs right. like that, entertainment, riding in your car, that kind of stuff. If you enjoy that, that's fine. But not when you're going into, in his presence yes. to worship him. Yes. You just don't. Well, let's finish this. Okay. Cause we got a lot we're going to cover. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. 
and should become victims. Would it be not better for us to return to Egypt? Yes, and be slaves? Right, right. And they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Oh, dear God. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. I would have had to probably fall on my face to keep me from saying things. <laughs> but Joshua, the son of Don, and Caleb who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. That's what Jews did when it's like it's when they were morning, yeah, morning. Saturday. Mm -hmm. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into yes. this land and give it to us. A land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And then they wanted to stone them. Then the Lord said he was, the Lord was ticked off. I'll use that expression. I love how it said, I'm going to go all the way down to verse 18. But let me start real quick just mm -hmm. to put this in. This is why when Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly and the congregation, he was, they were all, fell on their faces to pray. I know. That's why it's important where you go to church. Oh, that's good. Because you had pastors here, leaders, that fell on their face because they knew that if you kept that attitude where you would end up. Judgment would come. And you'd go back into slavery. Yeah. And so they had pastors who prayed. That just stuck out with me. I thought that was really cool. So, oh, I think it's very cool. I think it's it important where you out. go to church. It really is. Yeah. It really is. I don't know what I would have done when I moved to Savannah. I really don't. I had my mother, mm -hmm. but there's all I was learning was new to her. I was raised Pentecostal. I saw the power of God. Right. But this new way of believing, you know, when you pray, believe, you receive. These kind of things was new to my mother, and I couldn't always get a hold of Brother Emmanuel. And I only knew one couple that believed like I did, and they moved out. So <laughs> I, I was I was living on tapes. I hate to tell you. Well, she was living on real to real. That's real how old it real. was. <laughs> real to real. And she's dating herself because everything's a tape. Even the YouTube on the internet is a tape. Oh, it's a tape. I was watching a tape. <laughs> I was. It's right. Still, um, still, that's how I am. But I mean, that was my only. I mean, I I lived in there yeah. that on the, on the tapes from Brother Hagen. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And Brother Emmanuel. But here he is. He's interceding for the people. I love that. But verse, I love. Verse 18, the Lord is long-suffering and abundant Thank in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. Iniquity is what we're going to talk about today, the way they're bent. But, oh, I love this. But he by no means clears, clears the, the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon the iniquity of these people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven these people. But here's what happened. Are you all ready? Ah, uh, the Lord said, I pardon them, verse 22, because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, you have put me to me to the test now these 10 times wow. and have not heeded my voice. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers. Now shall any of these who rejected me see it, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different, a different spirit, spirit in him and has followed me fully. I will bring him to the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. Now the Amalekites and Canaanites will in the valley tomorrow turn and move out of the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. In other words, he said, none of these are going to go into the promised land. Their descendants will. Those over 40, I believe it was, get to go in. Was that what it was? I mean, 20. under 40. I don't know what it was. We'll have to find out and let you know the next one. There was a certain age. Might have been. It 20. was. It was a certain age, but I can't remember what it was. Whatever it was, those those were able to go in. But all the others that made a decision to yep. go back to Egypt, those were the ones that could not do. So what do you do? But he did relation? say, he did say the, those and their descendants yes. will not inherit the land. I know it. And, and that, that's the thing you and I talk about all the time. I don't think people really realize the decisions you make today concerning your relationship with the Lord will affect your children and your children's children. It will. Absolutely, positively. Yep. It'll affect. Because like you say, you know, the fact that how I'm 
would not allow y'all to have pity. I didn't ever do that in front of y'all. You know, no. I never had. I never. I knew it was poison. But when you were, when you didn't, when I say that you didn't allow us to have pity, yeah. it wasn't a mean thing. No, it was. You know, I, I've I'm all, I've been blessed to be raised in this all my life. This is all I've ever known, and I know you didn't get into it till I was like ten or whatever. But before then, I didn't really know. You from the time I can remember, I was brought up in word of faith mm -hmm. and all this, and it's never you never pointed your finger or said anything. You always showed me in the word what he said. Yeah. And because of that, I fell in love with the word. And because of that, there was scripture to back up what you were saying. And you were never mean. You were saying, no, 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 we're not going to do this because, yes. because we're going to trust our God, because we're going to do this. And I think that's, people need to understand that it wasn't a mean thing of not mm -hmm. letting you have pity. It no. was a, no, 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 we're not going there. Because if, if you continue to allow me to have pity, I would never walk in what God wanted. You wouldn't because you had to change your makeup in yes. a lot of ways because you couldn't even watch a story about Bambi. <laughs> she really I'd could. <laughs> you know, she really could. But that's what I did because I wanted my children to know why we believed what we did because I didn't want them to be raised to do it because Mama said. Because there comes an age that yes. Mama doesn't have that influence. Right. So they're wide open. Who the next one's going to come up and what are they going to follow them? So I wanted my children to know it wasn't because just because I said it, it's because God, God said, said it, it in the Word. So I always took the time very lovingly to show them this is why we do this and this is why we don't do that. We needed a miracle one time my finances. I didn't tell them all no. back then we had mortgage payments we were behind. I never told them that. I said, we need a financial miracle. And you didn't tell me in fear. No. It wasn't I, like, oh, we're worried. We needed this a miracle. No. No. I said, we need a miracle and watch how God does for our family. Yeah. And I did it fun because I wanted them to get excited about it. So when the miracle came, I said, look at the miracle. You didn't tell them every time. No. But I wanted to tell them enough that they realized we relied on God and he always came through. That gave them more security right. and more it did. confidence. It did, and we did the same thing when we were believing God for Lydia. Yes. We brought the boys in on it and said, hey, we're believing God for a little girl. This, we're going to pray for a little girl. And so every, you know, um, uh, at supper time or whatever, they'd thank God for the little girl, all these kind of yeah. things. And so when she was born, I can remember Caleb walks in. He's five years old, and he walks in the room, and he looks at her, and he goes, Mama, God did good, didn't he? <laughs> so he knew that God's the one that brought her forth. But you, you bring up another point when you were talking about that, how the, the ten spies went in. Eight of them came back with a negative report, but two came back with a good report, which tells you don't always follow the crowd. Oh, that's good. Don't always listen to what the majority of people are saying about the word or saying about whatever or whatever. If everybody's following this one um, teaching or one leading, don't don't just follow it. Know the word of God so you know, hey, I, I'm not following those eight. I'm following these two. That's Let's very important. So that's that's why you have to know this word. I remember there was a time in Savannah, <clears throat> there was a different women's group that was teaching the word. And one lady shared something that was totally unscriptural. And because I owned the bookstore, the lady came in and said something. I said, man, the, the word doesn't say that. And so I went over the word with her. Well, she went back and told the teacher. <laughs> and the teacher called me. She said, don't tell them that. I said, I'm not attacking you. But what she said doesn't agree with the word. It had to be about healing or some, yeah, some something major like thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not minor, major. And I said, she needed healing. And she said, well, I see that you're right. But she said, I'm not going to do anything about it. I said, oh, you're wrong. Wow. I said, your people will have great respect for you. Absolutely. If you tell them I talked against this last week, but now I see that mm -hmm. I was wrong. I said, oh, that'll give them greater security because they know whatever you teach, if it's wrong, you'll correct, you'll correct it. it. You know, and I did that not too long ago when I was teaching, when I was teaching in the book of Acts and I came yeah. to that one scripture in John and I was like, I preached it one way one Sunday. Then I got a hold of Bob Yandian's explanation of that scripture and I went back and I said, guys, I taught it wrong last week. This is what I should have taught. And I taught, told everybody how Bob Yandian yeah. explained it. First of all, <laughs> as a teacher, pastor, whoever, why would you want to teach people something false? I know. We're going to stand before God for what we yes. teach them. And I, I I'd don't rather think repent it's, here than have to. Well, also, to me, it lets people know, I, I'm studying this thing. Yeah. I don't know it all. I, I mean, okay. I've been in this my whole life, but I still don't know everything. I mean, many times do you and I call each other and go, hey, did you see this in the Word? 
And I love oh, it because yeah. sometimes she'll go, of course, I already knew that. And then she'll go, no, I really didn't. Or sometimes she <laughs> sometimes she did already know it. I was like, dang on it. I thought I was going to show you something good. And then sometimes you'll call, you know, you'll say, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that. You know, so it's yeah. just fun. And you've been in it longer than I have, but it's fun to, this is how you chew the word. This is, this is fun it to is. do. You got to have somebody, y'all need somebody that you can call up and go, look, go, look what I read this morning. That's right. I said, sometimes I come to the office and I can't even get anything done because I'm so busy running out of my office, sharing with Charlene or sharing with mom and Kippy what I've, what I've studied right. that day and what I found out. Because it's so, so interesting. It's, and it's so exciting. So you are going to enjoy her sessions when she starts teaching it about what is hereditary and what is, they call it genetic or what's the word? Familial and hereditary. Okay. She was a nurse. <laughs> I'm unqualified on that subject <laughs> medically. So we pray, Pastor Lisa, will you pray for the people? Sure. Father, we just thank you, first of all, for your word. Thank you so much for giving us your word that, Father, we can know your ways, we can know your thoughts, we can know your character. Father, thank you that you gave us every tool that we need, not only the Holy Spirit as our comforter and intercessor, but, Father, you gave us the tools that we need to fight, to fight the good fight of faith. And, Father, not just to fight, but to win. And Father, we're no, I, I pray that they don't follow a crowd, but they follow your word. And I heard a pastor say this the other day, that Jesus is the word. And your relationship with the written word is your, a reflection of your relationship with Jesus. And Father, I pray that they fall in love with your word and they dig in it themselves and find out who you are and what you're all about. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.